Honda's VFR 1200F. Almost a perfect sport tour. Stay tuned for a complete in-depth review of this amazing motorcycle and why I think it's the perfect missed opportunity. Let's do it. Greetings riders and welcome to another Pegasus Motorcycle Tours and Consulting Review. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. This here is my very own VFR 1200. This is a 2010 model. If you are familiar with the bikes, you'll know that white was never sold in the United States. So this was a color scheme only sold in Europe. And in fact, the luggage did get ordered from Europe and the bike was painted subsequently. I just love the pearl white. If you've seen my review of the 800 Little Brother, my favorite bike of all time, that one was also pearl white as was the original 1986. I believe that's considered generation two back in the day, pearl white. So I've been looking for it, pearl white, finally find it. And I've been owning this uh, and enjoying this motorcycle for the last almost two years. I think it's almost, almost the perfect sport tour. There are some deep faults with it and I'd like to take you through those. Let me tell you everything I love about this bike and everything later that I don't like about it. What could have been done better to make this really a, a keeper. I don't think it is a keeper. So let's start with the positives. Obviously, well, subjective, but then again, damn it, that's a good looking bike. This is a, a timelessly beautiful bike that's already 13 years old. You would never know just because of the lines. They're so sexy, so smooth, so aerodynamic. This was a concept vehicle that people really responded to. And it has this beautiful bulky uh, front stance, kind of like a bullish stance. And I love that about it. I also noticed with the VFR 800 side by side, uh, I've had four of those bikes. I love that motorcycle. The luggage sits a lot lower, probably around eight inches lower. All three do, in fact. That makes it look uh, very sporty and when you take off the luggage off this bike it looks amazing it's it's basically a sport bike that's got some heft to it that you could also take touring the motor itself is also very different what honda did with this one to save some weight is put a single overhead cam instead of the modern style of adding two so dual overhead cam is the norm these days but for this one they added only once overhead cam and if you notice the bike is so narrow here at the seat and very wide at the front and I love it I think that's my favorite look of the bike is this this here position and this was achieved by making the last two cylinders closer together than the front two that way the bike basically narrows out towards the rear kind of interesting so sport tour means you got the luggage technically you're supposed to get more range as well we'll talk about that uh, it's got a little more weight so that you're not fighting the wind as much and it's supposed to be a, a mile muncher with you and possibly a passenger and whatever luggage you need to carry that's what it does however i think it's a missed opportunity because honda failed to add a few very very important details to this bike that would make it a keeper for me a keeper meaning forever San Diego military town. If you're gonna make a perfect sport touring motorcycle, you cannot neglect to add cruise control and ride modes. I think now at this point, that has to be part of the bike that's intended for putting 600 miles a day, for example. Cruise control for the obvious reasons. So you're not hanging there, especially if you're hanging over your, your handlebars as much as you would on a sportier oriented motorcycle. Uh, ride modes, if you got 170 horsepower uh, going well, 148 going to the rear wheel, you need to control that. And especially if it's ride by wire throttle, like this one is, you need to add uh, or, or allow the user to be able to choose between ride modes, at least between a sport mode, a touring mode, and a, a rain mode, because this bike is very powerful, 170 horsepower. It's, that's an insane amount of power for a bike that sits at about 617 pounds curb weight. So that's with everything in it, right? So that bike 
it's just this is one of the most powerful bikes I've ever owned. I mean, you can be going 70, 80 miles an hour at a flick of the throttle, and you are flying. I mean, you're you're, you're passing cars as if they're standing still. And um, there was an instance where I looked back to look to, to be distracted by an accident. Saw a car was coming, also distracted, not seeing me. I hit the throttle to get away from him, and I raised the thing on the rear wheel, totally unintentional. Now, that's okay if the throttle wasn't so twitchy. The response of this this motorcycle is so aggressive it's like a barking dog i mean you're you're doing this just like you know a little minute twitches of the hand a uh, sneeze and it's like whoa, whoa. it just it just puts you in a mood of just aggression and that's one thing that i don't like about the bike i get off of it i'm just hyped up i need to relax i need to calm down i actually put a picture of my daughter's on the speedometer just to freaking calm down a little bit this bike is pretty pretty crazy and um, because you have all this power but you don't have a way to tune it down when you need to tune yourself down or when it's raining outside or when you just want to ride a little bit lighter uh, i think that's a huge handicap for this motorcycle especially again if it doesn't have cruise control never mind heated grips or any other amenities that they're actually kind of useful even in san diego right so Aside from it being very powerful, you, you get that uh, aggressive uh, throttle response that I'm not a fan of. Uh, this motorcycle has been reflashed professionally after installing the carbon fiber exhaust, but still the, the delivery is not where it needs to be. I'm not happy with it. I just think it's very aggressive. It's very twitchy and it cannot be twitchy. It needs to be smooth. There's too much power behind this wheel that's uh, delivered by this awesome shaft drive. Obviously just no maintenance adds weight, but you know, for the amount of time and stress it, it uh, relieves you from having to maintain that chain plus the looks. I think it's worth it. For a bike like this, it really needs it. So, so the shaft drive is constructed out of two pieces internally to accommodate for the shaft effect where the bike wants to buckle and rise. I speak about it more when I review the Yamaha Super Tenere. And you need that when you are pushing close to 100 foot-pounds of torque on this rear wheel. You also need a slipper clutch slipper clutch to allow for that release of tension when you're downshifting quickly so it doesn't lock up the rear wheel beautiful beautiful setup here the only aftermarket parts i have on this bike are the frame sliders a reupholstered seat and a puig windscreen that's a little bit higher a little bit taller and these lights as well these little front lights and you also get the center stand you do get the shaft drive on this sport touring motorcycle that's just at home at the track as it is in the desert going to vegas for the weekend you know so i think that's the benefit of this bike but honda missed the opportunity because they also offer the 1300 the st so that uh, a sport tour that has everything you could want on a sport tour offered at the same time as this bike meaning they were competing against each other for uh, diehard honda fans who wanted that honda reliability and simplicity but uh didn't necessarily uh, want to do without those amenities that i i speak of so i think uh that's what makes this a missed opportunity it's such an amazing bike and i've had the 1200 k 1200s by bmw now i have the k 1300s both of those bikes are I dare say less refined. The transmission on this thing is amazing. It's so smooth. Sometimes you even, you don't realize that you're sh you're in the gear that you are because the shift was so buttery smooth. And of course, these did come in the DCT clutch at the time, which a lot of people praise. Uh, I like the fact that I can shift my own motorcycle. Thank you very much. So this is not the DCT, but in comparison to the K1200 and K1300, this is just a smoother I dare I say more refined motorcycle well truth be told my 1300 is with the Hannigan sidecar amazing machine stay tuned for a, a, a review of that and if you're in town let me take you for a spin I use that for my Pegasus sidecar tour business guided narrated tours in San Diego and franchise opportunities available to a city near you if you're interested get in touch pretty amazing way to see the place so uh, I bought that K1300 because the 1200 had a few faults you can see my review on that motorcycle that uh, I wanted to 
see how these were addressed in the 1300. Obviously with the sidecar it's a different ride, but still pretty aggressive bike. I still prefer to ride this over those two, even though the BMWs have the telelever front suspension. I think the suspension here is a little overstressed. I think it could have been beefed up a little more so that uh, you can carry this 617 pound motorcycle in the corners with more confidence. Uh, you do get a manual adjuster here for the rear preload. Again, it's a sport tour, so you can carry more weight on the bike. That was the missed opportunity. And the other one is the gearing. The gearing is very wrong. The gearing is wrong on this bike. It's so high. I mean, in the corners, in the twisties, you are between first and second gear. Second gear is too low. First is too high, unless you're dragging a knee, which, you know, maybe you don't want to do. So it, that part is a little stressful. I The whole day, I don't think I reached in fifth or never mind sixth gear. I mean, you can be in fourth gear at 80 miles an hour, even though it redlines at 11,000. So you really have to wind it. I mean, the whole point of the V4 engine is that it's compact. Uh, it's the perfect combination of, of size and weight power and mid-range torque and i agree to that on my 800 interceptor which had the vtec which i loved and i still prefer over this motorcycle today i rode with another two gentlemen who have original owners of their own uh, interceptors from different generations uh, one was a 86 and the other one was a 1995 i believe but uh and they they love those motorcycles but again vtec gear driven cans etc Three generations of white VFRs. That's pretty impressive. This one, if I remember correctly, 87, correct? Six. 86, older than I am by a year. Look at that. <laughs> 117,000 miles, one owner who knows how to appreciate a good bike. Awesome. And this one is a 2010, 1200, sold to me by this gentleman right here who still retained his, what is this, the, the fourth generation, right? Fifth. Fifth generation. 98. 98, the 750, right? Well, they called it an 800, it's 781. 781. Yep. Uh, original owner as well? No. Except, oh, you ha you're not? Oh, okay, I misunderstood. No, my girlfriend bought this for me in, I think, 2000. Uh-huh. Had like 6,000 miles on it. And recently it's been painted white. Correct. Because this guy didn't come in the United States in white. Uh, you mentioned before you sold it to me that you had to um, buy the luggage from Europe. Yes. And this is the original pearl white, which still blows my mind that yes. back in 86, they had a pearl white. So what made you decide on the VFR? What's the favorite thing that you like about this motorcycle? Beside the VFR? Beside the VFR. <laughs> I was originally looking at the Ninja 600. Uh-huh. So I saw this in the showroom. That was it. So it was aesthetic or? That was it. Yeah. It was aesthetic. What is the most, uh, well, I guess, what's your favorite thing about the bike so far? You obviously put a ton of miles on it. A lot of years with you, so how has the ownership been of this bike? Great, great performance, great comfort, great handling. And this gentleman purchased my Suzuki SV, one of my all-time favorite bikes. I had, I think, four or five of those. And uh, it's just a, a, a twin sport bike. You always got to like that. So I think the V4 really hits it perfectly in the amount of balance and, and low-end torque, mid-range torque. I think it's a great and this one here in particular is with the gear driven cams which were kind of a overkill right um they don't do that anymore or actually in yours did they do the gear driven cams yeah oh, they, they i see okay yeah and and uh, do you notice the difference i mean between the two is it noise is it feel as we were coming up they were harmonizing when i interesting. was close to you they were kind of harmonizing interesting yeah it really sounded nice that's so cool yeah so what made you decide to sell this one and keep this one if it's this, not just a uh, you know sentimental value, it's mostly that I have too uh -huh. much too much time and memories and experience, and this was a, like I said a gift. Okay. I just I can't ever part with it. I'll never sell it. What is the mileage on this bike right now? Sixty four. Sixty four. Yeah. Any issues between the you know two hundred thousand miles between you guys with the bikes? Any serious things? No well, serious things. This was known that the rectifier uh -huh. would go out. Okay. So it was like a faulty part. I see. And then, I don't know, some years later they improved it and it's fine. Yeah. But aside from that, no, nothing. But what a sight, huh? Three generations of white VFRs. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm a sucker for the white, man, and especially the pearl white. Me too. I love this rim too. I think the wheels on the VFRs were always so attractive, especially on this one. It's like a work of art. Well, as soon as right. they went to the single-sided swing arm, right? Yeah. What year was that? Or what generation, I guess? 
Fantastic. Did, did any of these ever come with luggage options or no? No. No. I don't think so. Yeah. For me, the, the luggage is what sells it, to be honest. Yeah. As compared to the, I got the K1300, mm -hmm. the luggage is a nightmare. I got right. the 1200, the luggage is a joke. Well, to be able to carry so, stuff. Yeah, and it's just matched and beautiful and very functional. You know, it took me a few months of owning this bike to realize that this actually can fit a helmet. Good. I didn't, I didn't, re you would never think how small it is in comparison to the 800 that I own. Did you ever get the key figured out or no? I tried. I bought the parts, I was messing with it. Right. Now there's no lock in it. It's just there's a lock, but there's no. It's not fitted to the key. You, you, just you can open degrees, it with anything. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was just kind of. It took way too much time. But nobody will know that. Nobody would know. That. Nobody I mean, would know. Lock yeah, it, of course. Yeah. Gonna, oh, let me turn it. Next yeah. Year. So the gearing is pretty bad. I mean, I, I I think the gearing was a total miss, which makes this not a bike I want to keep forever unfortunately because i love looking at it i think it's the best looking bike i've ever owned even even next you know i had my k1200 in the living room i loved the way that bike looks the 1300 looks even better what those bikes don't have that this bike does is the amazing color match removable luggage this actually as small as it looks it can fit a full-size helmet in there you just put it there and close it it's really great this is a 26 liter uh, side case with a 31 liter top case removable you have a nice handle it's key matched perfect the way it needs to be it looks as good with the luggage as it does without as opposed to the k1200 which has shared luggage that's expandable and awkward and not color matched they don't have a top case if you're going to sell a sport tour sell it with luggage i mean the, the luggage is so useful it makes it a uh, everyday rider it makes it a commuter it makes it perfect for grocery runs for everything I do like how you can see the headers, but uh, they do get hot on the right side. Your, your right foot tends to kind of sweat a little more. But look at this beautiful one-piece fairing and the way that the air travels through it. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning Honda engineering. It's, it's almost too beautiful for what Honda normally likes to make that's very utilitarian in their artistic design. The brakes are amazing. They're link brakes, so you really can't skid. Uh, even though this motorcycle did lack any kind of traction control until 2012. 2012 addressed this issue, gave the traction control that I think this bike really needed, and also addressed an issue with sticky brakes that this bike had on some numbers in the early 2010s. But uh, Nissin, uh, home brand, basically the Honda brand of uh, calipers, you get six pistons in the front, plenty of stopping power for this bike. This bike had so much potential because the looks are there, the power is there, the the buttery transmission and the clutch and is, is there, but the gearing is off and the throttle response is, is off. It's not where it needs to be. And I don't know how to get around it to make this a keeper. You know, I can deal without, you know, I have here a throttle lock and throttle meister and that kind of thing. It's not the same thing. But, uh, and I find my right hand kind of numbing pretty often on this bike. So I can't even ride it that hard because half the time my, my hand is completely numb. But I love looking at this thing. It just, it's, it's a fantastically beautiful machine. Um, I think Honda, Honda really hit the nail right on the head with the, with the aesthetics of the bike. Even though aesthetics, of course, are subjective, it's, it's just a gorgeous bike. It looks, looks fantastic, especially with that single-sided swing arm with that beautiful 17-inch wheel. I believe 4.8 uh, travel, inches of travel suspension for both the 17-inch front and the 17-inch rear tires. And uh, you get fantastic brakes. 300, I believe 20 millimeter up front, uh, 280, 278, something to the fact in the rear. Fantastic brakes that are linked. So if you stomp on the rear, you're not locking it up. It'll just slow the bike down. It'll prevent it from dipping even. Just a very, very smart system used in the Goldwing and other Hondas as well. I speak of it when I review the Goldwing. If you'd like to know the history of the VFR, I talk more about it in my review of the white 800 Interceptor that I had before selling this one. So I, I, I sold that one because I wanted to experience this motorcycle, but if I'm honest, I think I would go back to that bike again. That bike was perfect for me. And uh, rightly so, I named it my favorite bike of all time. Still remains the case. The speedometer is very simple. It's a digital speedometer on the right-hand side with a with an analog tack. Of course, I love that combo because uh, this bike just reaches crazy speed so quickly that 
an analog speedo would not work like it's on a 1300 bmw you have two analog speedo and attack and the speedo you know winds all the way from i think this way like i don't know what is it four o'clock five o'clock all the way I mean, it just looks absurd you can't see it you don't even know what gear you're in the numbers are tiny it needs to be digital you get the ambient temperature of course and uh, you get uh, trip meter but it's pretty pretty simple pretty basic there the other complaint is about the size of the tank the tank has been reduced from 22 liters to 18 and a half so you get less range from a more thirsty bike thirstier bike so that's another thing i mean if you don't mind stopping at gas stations all the time not all the time but more frequently for sure that's one thing that people really complain about this motorcycle is that the tank has been reduced in size it's about five gallons so you'll find yourself at the gas station pretty often with this bike with the 150 or so mile range and 35 or so miles a gallon that's one big argument that yeah, you see three gallons right when the lamp went on actually so it's kind of annoying to be honest for a sport touring bike, I like taking brakes as much as the next guy, but not this much, you know, this frequently. It's a 31.9 inch seat height, so it's accessible to most riders. I'm um, 5'8", 172 centimeters, have no problem maneuvering this bike. You feel the weight in the corners, but it takes it really well. I mean, you got plenty of power to pull out. Again, the brakes are fantastic to get you out of that trouble. So, uh, the, the, the uh, again, the main issue with riding this bike hard is the twitchy throttle. I mean, it's just, uh, it's not confidence inspiring at all. You kind of want to uh, take it down a notch, you know, just because, again, you sneeze and, and the bike is doing things you don't want it to do and there's just too much power. So again, if you're going to give me a ride-by-wire throttle, which I don't prefer because I lose some of the feel, at least that's how I feel about it, I lose some of the feel under my arm, on, the, on my hand, then at least give me one or two ride modes, well, two or three ride modes so that I can, I can, tune it down a little bit or, or accommodate for the rain or for heavy traffic or whatever. It's because um, if you're lane splitting and you're doing crazy, you don't got a lot of room to maneuver. So um, you, you just can't have the bike be that aggressive. It needs to be more under control. This is a total monster. So it's like a monster. It's like a barking dog. And when I get off of it, I'm a barking dog myself, as you could tell, just hyped up, you know? So I, I think uh, I'm in a, at the stage of my life where I just need to calm down a little bit, two little kids in the house, and just need to relax and, and take it easy, enjoy the bike. But um, for that reason, my Moto Guzzi's have been amazing to me. So if you haven't seen it, take a look at the uh, California Review and the review of the MGX Flying Fortress, just incredible motorcycles that I would grab the keys more often than on this bike, I gotta say. So there it is, a review of the VFR 1200F. Of course, they make the X, which is the cross tour, kind of the adventure touring motorcycle. People seem to love it because you never see them on sale. When you do, they stay for a day and they're gone. But uh, it just speaks to the really great nature of these bikes. People, people really love it. I know this is gonna be a polarizing review because there's so many owners out there that absolutely swear by these bikes. They keep them forever. They're serious bikes for serious riders, so they don't switch hands very often. Again, if you are interested in, in this motorcycle or the VFR line, take a look at my 800 review. I've reviewed nearly every sport tour in the market, including the Sprint ST, the Futura by Aprilia, uh, the other VFR as well etc just take a look at my playlist if you're in the market you won't be disappointed but again keep in mind that there are these these little things that um, make this bike not a keeper for me we're going to know in a year when the comment section fills with angry owners who love the bike and do not agree with me so be sure to read those comments and i always appreciate constructive criticism from owners that know this bike and have had it for for much longer than i've had so that uh who's ever looking into this bike can get all kinds of opinions. In the meantime, ride safe until next time. Nick, out.